In this video, I'm going to work through the process of finding the exact value for the sine of 57 degrees, and I'm going to do so using the difference identity for sine, which says the sine of, and we've got two angles in here, A minus B, has this expansion. It's the sine of A, which is the first angle, times the cosine of B, which is the second angle, minus the sine of B times the cosine of A. Okay, so in this formula, we're going to go ahead and include four values of sine. And these four values of sine, I've gone ahead and worked out from scratch in previous videos. So you can go ahead and find those videos down in the description for this video. I have linked to each of these four videos. And these are probably much more interesting to uh, view than, say, this, because all we're going to do is throw some values into uh, the sine identity here, and then just go ahead and simplify our expression. So at the end of this video, you'll have the exact value for the sine of 57 degrees, but you'll notice most of the heavy lifting has been done previously in other videos. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on this. So we need two angles, A and B, that when I subtract them, I get 57 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and use the sine of 75 degrees minus 18 degrees. Okay, so 75 minus 18, of course, does make 57. And so we're going to go ahead and expand this out. And so it will become the sine of 75 degrees times the cosine of 18 degrees minus the sine of 18 degrees uh, times the cosine of 75 degrees. Yeah, that's multiplication right there. Okay. Well, when uh, we go ahead and substitute a lot of these values in, you'll notice something in particular that I have cosines here and not all sines. So we'll talk about that here in a second. The first one here is the sine of 75 degrees. Well, I see it's this ratio right here. It's going to be uh, the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 all over 4. And I'm going to multiply that by the cosine of 18 degrees. Well, sine and cosine have a really nice relationship where the cosine of one angle is going to be the uh, same value as the sine of the complement of that angle. So instead of using 18 degrees with cosine, well, 90 minus 18 is 72, so I can use the sine of 72. And again, we're switching these cosines to sines because these specifically were the videos I worked out and solved. So sine of 72, I can go ahead and replace with a cosine of 18. They are the same values. And so I'll see this as the square root of 2 over 4, and then multiplied by this square root expression right here. And from that, I'm going to subtract the sine of 18, which is 1 fourth times, and then we have this uh, square root of 5 minus 1. And we're going to multiply that by the cosine of 75, which once again we're going to change to sine, and it'll be the sine of 15, because 75 and 15 are complementary angles. So this becomes then the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 all over 4. Okay, so at this point, we're just going to clean this up a little bit and see what we have. So first of all, I have 4 times 4 here in the denominator, which will make 16. But before I do that, uh, I could distribute the square root of 2 through both of these, or what I could do is factor out a square root of 2 and uh, multiply it with a square root of 2 that's here. Either way, I'm ultimately going to have a 2 over this 4 times 4, which is 16. And then if I had factored out the square root of 2, I'll end up with a square root of 3 plus 1, and then multiplied by that uh, square root expression here, which means that this first piece will simplify, and it will look just like this. And this is probably about how we'll leave it. Okay, so right there. And from that, we'll subtract. So once again, the 4 times the 4 is the uh, 1 16th here. And then we have the square root of 5 minus 1, and the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2. I'm going to go ahead, though, once again, and factor out the square root of 2, and go ahead and put it out front. So I have the square root of 2 over 16 as a little kind of coefficient piece for the rest of our uh, irrational numbers here. And then I'm going to multiply that by, I'll bring this out next, so the square root of 3 minus 1, and then times that square root of 5 minus 1. And uh, the only reason I would do that is because this square root of 3 minus 1 and this square root of 3 plus 1, uh, they kind of look nice. It's, you'll see a lot of patterns happening when you're doing these sine values. And so 
I've kind of written these in the same form. So you have this 1 8, this fraction out front with the square root of 2 over 16. And then I wrote this uh, radical 3 plus 1, radical 3 minus 1 in this case. And then this square root expression here with my square root of 5 minus 1. So I'm saying that this expression here is going to be the exact value for the sine of 57 degrees. So I have not uh, rounded or found any decimal equivalency or anything like that. This is just the difference of two irrational numbers here. So let's go ahead and grab a calculator and see if it works. Okay, so here's our calculator. So what we're going to do is do the inverse sine, and we're going to go ahead and put in this expression and see if we get 57 degrees. So we'll start out with this 1 8 out front and multiply that by the square root of 3 plus 1, and then we'll multiply that by our uh, radical expression right there. And from that we'll subtract, and we have it looks like the square root of 2 divided by 16, multiplied with the square root of 3 minus 1 and the square root of 5 minus 1. Close off all those parentheses, and you'll see, yeah, 57 degrees. So we can see then that this expression is going to be the exact value for the sine of 57 degrees. And we went ahead and got that by using the difference identity for sine. And we included these four other values of sine which uh, were previously found in other videos. And these values were found from scratch. And you can go ahead and find the link for these uh, down in the description for this video. So here again is the exact value for the sine of 57 degrees.